Good morning and welcome to New Day Northwest. Welcome to my home. We're broadcasting, of course, from remote locations as everybody's social distancing. And speaking of that, by now, parents have probably heard I'm bored, I'm bored from their kids quite a lot. So we engaged fun expert Mac Weaver at Snapdoodle Toys in Kenmore to show us about some of her favorite games and things that we can take advantage of. Mac, good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you. Now, I can see you. So you're open kind of on a technicality because you're also a UPS store. Tell me about that. Exactly. Uh, so our Kenmore store has always been just a UPS drop off point where people can get their packages taken. Um, and we were all set to close because we aren't essential when uh, we got somebody walked in and was like, you guys can't close. You're literally a postal service. So we got to stay open on a technicality. So we've been shipping out of here to everybody in the Seattle area and uh, we're doing curbside pickup for people um, and up and we try to make sure that we stay open so up to two people can come in with masks on and check out the toys and just find stuff for their kids. And boy, do we need things. So you're going to show us some of your favorites. Where do we start? Um, I was thinking we could go in age order if that sounds good to you. Yeah, definitely. I was going to start with the younger set. So this is going to be um, most parents have probably heard of uh, Peaceable Kingdom games. So they have games like Hoot Owl Hoot or the fairy game. Um, they're all games designed to be cooperative for your younger child, so that way they have something to play, but also not be competitive with the other kids around them, um, which honestly is really great, especially because I imagine everybody's getting on each other's nerves right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, to learn some cooperation skills might not be a bad thing right about now. Exactly. Bandit's Memory Mix-Up is the first one we're talking about. And uh, it's actually a memory game where you look at everything that's in this magnifying glass and you try to see if you can memorize what's in there. Uh, so we have a leaf, a watermelon, a bunny, a sun, a mushroom, and a dragonfly. Then you turn it over, you shake it up, and you get one of the items out, keeping it face down so you can't see. And then you flip it back up and you go over the items again and try to remember what's missing. So in this case, we have the bunny, the leaf, the dragonfly, the sun, and the watermelon. I think it's the mushroom. <laughs> and I have no idea. This would be a bad game for me if I were only three. <laughs> <laughs> it is the mushroom. And whoever guesses correct. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, let's talk about kids five to 10. Got it. Uh, for that one, I was looking at Ribbon Ninja which uh, this one's more of a competitive game and it's actually more active too. So each kid puts on a little bracelet that has a ribbon attached. And then after they get them all on, they're going to try and grab everybody else's ribbon. So you're outside, you're playing in the sunlight and you're trying to reach out and grab that from each other. And whoever's the only one with a ribbon left wins. So it's kind of like flag football. Yeah, exactly. It's like that, but it's designed for younger kids and uh, and that way they can all, it's a, a, a little bit nicer than flag football, I guess. I actually think I would enjoy that game just out oh, yeah. in the backyard. My yeah, husband and I can and, play. <laughs> and, it's not, and the nice thing about that it would, too is it's a simple setup and it just gets everybody kind of moving and and dancing around a little bit. Oh, you know what? That gives me an idea. We should play that game to music. Okay, let's talk about teenagers. Teenagers? Um, I actually picked Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza. It's a card Woo. game. Uh, we actually just got this in recently, and I'm normally over at our Redmond store, um, but all of our teenagers over there, one of them bought it and played it, and then every single other one ended up buying and playing it as they all played it together. So perfect for the teen crowd. And what it is is it's a simple card game where as you lay these cards down, you lay them out face up and you say the words on them. Uh, and you say them in a specific order. You say taco, cat, goat, cheese, and you keep laying them down. Uh, and if the card matches what you say as you say it, so if I pick this up and I'm saying goat at the same time, everybody slaps the deck and whoever's the last person to slap gets all the cards put into their deck. I like that game. That looks like fun. Adults could play that too, obviously, right? And there's a few other tricks to the trade. There are other cards that when played, fun things happen. So if you play a gorilla and you set it down, everybody has to beat their chest and then slap <laughs> their hand in the middle. 
narwhal means you have to clap your hands over your head and then slap your hand in the middle. And then groundhog, you beat the table and then slap your hand in the middle. And whoever- That sounds does awesome. On the decks too. Perfect. Okay, so you have a choice also for family and adults. Yes, absolutely. So for family, um, I was looking at, we were looking at Bananagrams. We have a bunch of different variations. This is Bananagrams Party. Uh, so most people tend to know Bananagrams. It's Scrabble without the board is how it basically amounts to. So it's all about spelling. Party actually adds a uh, little bit more to it because it's got these extra tiles that tell you to do fun things. So like mess up your board or, or reach in there or you can only do something if you say it aloud sort of things. But I actually brought this out because a coworker of mine has a uh, seven-year-old daughter who's been learning spelling and she's not been doing too well with just like writing it out or remembering it in her head. But if she has all these tiles with the letters on it, she's been able to spell because she can kind of move them around until she gets them right. And I think Bananagrams is great for that reason. <laughs> Lots of parts. I think everybody should have Bananagrams. There's all kinds of ways to play and it's super fun. Thank you for being the fun expert and for giving us a bright opening to our show today, Mac. We really appreciate it. Absolutely, and thank you for having me.